The Oxford Bookworms Library Stage 4 Chapter 6 The New Year's Eve Dance On December the 31st, it was snowing and very cold. All day there were ladies and gentlemen arriving at the Red House. Godfrey Cass was waiting at the door for the only guest he cared about, Nancy Lameter. Finally, she arrived, sitting behind her father on his horse, looking more beautiful than ever. Her lovely face blushed as she saw Godfrey come forward to lift her down from the horse. Why is he waiting for me? she thought. I thought I made it clear to him that I'll never marry him. People say he leads a bad life, and I can't marry a man like that. But the squire appeared just then to welcome his guests, and in the excitement nobody noticed Nancy's pink face as Godfrey's strong arms lifted her down. She hurried into the house with the other ladies to change her clothes. The house was full of servants running here and there. Mrs Kimball, who always helped the squire arrange these parties, was giving orders in a loud voice. Cooks were preparing food in the kitchens, and there was already a wonderful smell of baking in the air. Upstairs, the ladies were excitedly putting on their best dresses, while talking to each other all the time. Nancy met her aunt, Mrs Osgood, who introduced her to some visitors of hers. The Mrs Gunn were two young ladies who were not beautiful, but dressed very fashionably. Just then, Nancy's older sister, Priscilla, arrived. She was a large, cheerful girl, with a round face and a nose pink with cold. As they were changing their clothes, Priscilla said to Mrs Osgood, Look at our dresses, aunt. Of course, Nancy looks beautiful in hers, but this colour makes me look yellow. Nancy says we must wear the same dresses, because we're sisters, although I'm five years older. I'm ugly, I know I am. But I don't mind, she turned to Mrs Osgood's two visitors. In my opinion, the pretty girls are useful, I'm sure you agree, to catch the men. I don't think men are worth worrying about. Any woman with a good father and a good home had better stay single. That's what I'm going to do anyway. We ugly girls don't need husbands. Mrs Osgood stood up and said quickly, my visitors and I should go downstairs now. Priscilla and Nancy will see you later. And the three ladies hurried out. Oh, really, Priscilla, cried Nancy when they were alone. You never think before you speak. I'm sure the Mrs Gunn thought you were very impolite. You almost told them they were ugly. Did I? asked Priscilla in surprise. Well... That's the way I am. I always tell the truth. But I'm the ugly one. Just look at me. Priscilla, you know I asked you to choose the dresses, replied Nancy worriedly. I don't mind what colour I wear. You look lovely in this colour, dear child. You know you always have whatever you want in the end, although you never give orders or shout about it. I'm looking forward to seeing you married. It'll be fun watching you make your husband do exactly what you want. Don't say that, answered Nancy, blushing. You know I'm never going to get married. Priscilla laughed. I'm the one who'll stay single. And if you don't like Godfrey Cass, well, there are plenty of other young men. Come, let's go downstairs now. Although Priscilla was right in saying she was not good-looking, she was very popular among her neighbours because she was so cheerful and sensible. And Nancy was not only considered to be the most beautiful girl in and around Ravelo, but also one of the most intelligent. Seats at the dining table had been kept for the Lameter sisters. Priscilla was taken to sit between her father and the squire, 
Nancy felt herself blushing again as Godfrey Cass came to lead her to a seat between himself and the vicar, Mr. Crackenthorpe. She knew that if she married Godfrey, she would one day be the most important woman in Ravelo, the squire's wife. But she repeated firmly to herself that she could not marry a man of bad character. As she sat down, the vicar, who was always polite to ladies, said with a smile, Ah, Miss Nancy, you're looking lovely this evening, isn't she, Godfrey? Godfrey made no reply and avoided looking at Nancy. There was too much he wanted to say to her. But the squire, who always enjoyed his parties and was feeling extremely cheerful, was rather impatient with his son. He thought he had better speak if Godfrey was too shy to do it himself. That's right, the squire said loudly. When I look at Miss Nancy here, I think she's more beautiful than any girl I've ever seen. While they were eating and drinking, people around the table were listening with interest to the squire's words. Perhaps Godfrey will marry Nancy after all, the vicar's wife whispered to Mrs. Osgood. Mr. Lammeter's back was very straight as he looked across the table at his daughter. He was a serious, careful gentleman who considered the Lammeters a better family than the Cassies. He had already decided that Godfrey must change his way of life before Nancy could possibly marry him. Just then, Dr. Kimball called across the table. Miss Nancy, will you save a dance for me? Come, come, Kimball, said the squire. Let the young ones enjoy themselves. My son Godfrey will be angry if you take Miss Nancy away. I expect he's asked her for the first dance already, haven't you, Godfrey? Godfrey was feeling very uncomfortable by now. Turning to Nancy, he said as lightly as possible, I haven't asked her yet, but I hope she'll agree, if nobody's asked her. No, I haven't accepted anyone else, replied Nancy quietly with a blush. So, will you please have the first dance with me? asked Godfrey, beginning to feel better. She had not refused him. I will, answered Nancy coldly. She was still sure she would not marry him, but she wanted to remain polite. Ah, well, you're a lucky man, Godfrey, said Dr. Kimball with a laugh. I think I can hear the music starting now. The guests got up from the table in pairs and small groups to move into the large hall where the dancing was about to start. The small village band was already playing as the squire led the vicar's wife to the end of the hall to start the dance. They were followed by Godfrey and Nancy and the other ladies and gentlemen. As the dance went on, Godfrey felt happier and happier. Holding Nancy in his arms, he forgot all his problems. Suddenly, the squire's heavy foot stood on part of Nancy's dress, and some of the material was pulled away at the waist. Nancy asked Godfrey to take her to a quieter place, where she could repair the damage. He took her to a small room near the hall, hoping they would have a few private moments together. But Nancy sat down on the chair furthest away from him and said coldly, Thank you, sir. You needn't stay. I'm very sorry about taking you away from the dance. It's not very kind of you, said Godfrey, moving close to her, to be sorry you've danced with me. I didn't mean that, replied Nancy, blushing prettily. Gentlemen have so many things to enjoy. I'm sure one dance can't matter very much. You know that isn't true. You know one dance with you means more to me than anything else in the world. Nancy was a little surprised. 
Godfrey had not said anything like this to her for a long time. She replied firmly, "I'm afraid I can't believe you, Mr. Godfrey." Nancy, if I changed my life, would you think better of me? Would you like me then? Godfrey knew these were dangerous words, but the sudden chance of speaking to her alone made him say more than he had planned. I'd be glad to see a good change in anybody, sir. You're very hard, Nancy," said Godfrey bitterly. "You could help me to be better. I'm very miserable, but you don't feel anything. I think people who behave badly don't feel anything," said Nancy sharply. Forgetting to be cool and distant, Godfrey was delighted. He wanted to make her argue with him, to show him that she cared about him. But just then, Priscilla hurried in, saying, "Dear child, let me look at your dress. I saw the squire step on it during the dance." I suppose I'd better go now," Godfrey said disappointedly to Priscilla. It. Doesn't matter at all to me whether you go or stay," said Priscilla impatiently, looking closely at the waist of Nancy's dress. "Do you want me to go?" Godfrey asked Nancy. "Do whatever you like," replied Nancy, trying to sound cold again. "Well, I want to stay," answered Godfrey, and sat down. Tonight he wanted to enjoy being with Nancy for as long as possible, without thinking about what would happen tomorrow.